A lot of games are released this year, some good, some bad, but not all those good games get the attention they deserve, so here are 8 underappreciated, obscure or niche games that you might have missed or overlooked in 2019. First to start with a personal favourite of mine that released at the beginning of the year, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. As the name suggests, this is a remaster of the 2008 original in Full HD 60fps and includes a ton of extra content that only released on the PS3 version in Japan. Despite being over 10 years old at this point, Vesperia is a fan favourite for many in the Tales series for good reason, featuring an extremely likeable cast of characters, an engaging and grossing story, not to mention a great combat system. If you played the original 360 version, the additional content offers plenty to make returning again a joy, and if you haven't, this is one of the best JRPGs for the current gen consoles that you shouldn't overlook. Next up we have Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, a Metroidvania title and spiritual successor to the older Castlevania games that was funded thanks to Kickstarter. Set in 18th century England, you play as Miriam, an orphan scarred by an alchemist curse which slowly crystallises her body. To save herself and the world, she needs to defeat the evil summoner Gabriel. What's really admirable is that during its development, fans shared criticism of various elements, from the lighting, animation to the environments. Instead of ignoring it, they acknowledged those aspects and completely revamped and improved them before release, which is a rare but nice surprise in today's industry. The following title is Outer Wilds, not to be confused with the upcoming similarly named The Outer Worlds. Outer Wilds is a space exploration indie game where the player is set on a strange planet and stuck in a 22 minute time loop that sees the sun going supernova and killing you. Each death means you start at the beginning, although you retain all your previously gained knowledge. With that in mind, it's the player's job to explore and uncover the secrets of an alien race called the Nomai, as well as the mystery of why the sun goes nova. Outer Wilds doesn't hold your hand like many games to today, setting you free to do what you like and solve puzzles on your own. This can sometimes prove frustrating, but also makes those moments where you finally figure out what to do all the more rewarding. The fourth game is Judgment, a spin-off from the long-running Yakuza series. Judgment places you in the hands of Yagami, a disgraced attorney turned private detective, as he attempts to uncover the truth behind a series of brutal murders and prove a man's innocence. The game features the over-the-top combat you'll be familiar with from Yakuza, but also includes detective aspects where you'll trail and interrogate suspects, as well as uncover evidence in the environment. Unlike the Yakuza series, it has English voice acting, in addition to the original Japanese voiceover, which is something I personally really appreciated, as I find reading a lot of dialogue frustrating. Judgment is a long game with a surprisingly interesting story, but if that's not enough to convince you, there is a demo on the PS4 store right now. Although more niche games like this don't tend to sell as well as others, Sega have voiced that it has exceeded their expectations, which is great news. The next title is A Plague Tale Innocence, which you could draw parallels with 2013's The Last of Us, and while not quite as good as that title, few are, so that shouldn't be taken as a put down, as A Plague Tale is a great game and received way less attention than it deserved. Set during a plague-ridden 14th century France, the game tells a character-driven story between two siblings trying their best to survive, and has a great emphasis on stealth and puzzle solving. What's so impressive is how fantastic the graphics are, with extremely detailed character models and some of the best lighting I've ever seen, all from a developer nobody had really heard of before. Entry number 5 is Katana Zero. Katana Zero is a 2D action platformer by ASCIISoft and places you in the hands of a samurai called Subject Zero in a neo-noir metropolis of New Mecca. What immediately hits you when you start playing is the incredibly stylistic pixel art aesthetic that really catches your eye. Unlike many other similar games, you don't have a health bar. One hit and you are dead. Couple that with how quick the gameplay is and you'll need to be on your toes to succeed. In order to do that, you'll need to dodge and deflect bullets, slash enemies with your blade and use environmental traps to your advantage. Thankfully you do have the ability to temporarily slow down time to help you out of tricky situations, but even with that aid, Katana Zero is adrenaline rushing from start to finish. Moving on we have another indie title with a stylistically retro art style, Cadence of Hyrule, which is a crossover between Crypt of the Necrodancer and The Legend of Zelda. Featuring a great blend of the rhythmic gameplay from the former and the settings, character and music from the latter, Cadence of Hyrule is a charming, fun and addictive experience that works better than I ever would have imagined. Despite only lasting a few hours, it does feature a semi-randomly generated overworld and dungeons, so each new playthrough provides a pretty unique experience that will keep you feeling fresh and you invested longer. The final entry is quite different from the rest as it's a PlayStation VR only title, probably the best one around at the moment, Blood and Truth. 
Blood and Truth as a fully fleshed out game based on the London Heist demo from 2016. It's not perfect, the on-rails movement can feel a bit clunky, and the story is certainly nothing to write home about, but when it comes to the shooting mechanics and immersion, it's unrivaled by anything else in my opinion. Just like Judgment, there is a demo on the PlayStation Store, so if you have a PlayStation VR, there's no excuse not to check it out. That's it for today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for a notification each time a video goes live. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.